Mid-patch has been pretty hectic for 14.8 as Skarner hotfix nerfs have been released, Graves has been hotfix buffed, while Akali has been issued a huge bug fix nerf. So in today's video, we'll be providing you guys with an updated tier list for every single role as we reach the midway point of 14.8. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to stay up to date and so you don't miss out on next week's changes. And remember, if you're struggling to climb in League, Skill Capped is the only place that guarantees you'll climb at least 5 divisions while actively using our service, otherwise you can claim a full refund. We do this because our service really works, and this is the best time of the season to get in on skill caps as we've just released tons of site exclusive courses designed for you to power learn the most important concepts for climbing in League of Legends stupidly fast compared to those who don't use skill cap. Join today for unlimited access to the world's most famously effective League of Legends guides, and remember one subscription gives you access to all of our other games as well. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below to stop wasting time being hard stuck and get the rank you actually want. And with that said, let's get into it. The main topic of discussion for the mid-patch update is Skarner, as Riot had his changes listed as adjustments in the patch notes, but they really should have been listed as buffs. Although Skarner's W was nerfed, the changes to Q were huge buffs, as the ability is now smoother to use and had its stats boosted as well. With Skarner performing exceptionally well to kick off 14.8, Riot has already gone ahead and issued some hotfix nerfs. Passive max health damage has been lowered from 7 scaling to 12 to 7 scaling to 10%. Q damage bonus health scaling has been reduced reduced from 6 to 5%. Lastly, W base damage has been lowered from 50 scaling to 150 to 50 scaling to 130. So it's mainly scaling nerfs here to Skarner, which should actually negatively influence him more in the lower ranks than in high elo. It's a bit strange that Riot went with this approach, because Skarner has actually been thriving a lot more in high elo than in low elo. The W max for Skarner top lane had been winning more than Q max, but now that W is weaker when fully maxed out, Q should become more attractive. W is just so reliable since it's a point and click ability, so it should still remain the best spell to max in melee matchups, but if you were against range, then going for Q max should be on equal footing, if not better now. Our challenger top laner Sam actually just showcased the strength of this W max on Skarner top in his recent full game commentary that is now up on our website. Prior to these nerfs going through, Skarner was definitely looking like an OP champ to start off the patch, but now that the changes are out, we're going to be placing him in the S tier. So having a look at the top lane tier list, there isn't very much movement for mid patch. OP tier will be looking the same as where we had it for pre patch, with Urgot and Trundle taking taking home the slots. Mordekaiser was the one other top lane champ who was changed for this patch, and going to the patch we definitely felt like people were overestimating the changes. A lot of people were thinking that Mord would become super broken now that you can't QSS's R, but it's really not been the case. In reality, games in solo queue often don't even last long enough for players to have the luxury to grab a QSS in their build path. And even in games where players could, often it's just not an item they think about building against Mordekaiser as opposed to someone like Malzahar. If Malz were to get this similar treatment where you couldn't QSS's R, we definitely think that he would see a more significant boost in power. On the analytical front, Mord has seen a drop off in win rate for this patch as his E damage was nerfed and it looks like that change is outweighing the Q buff and QSS change. So overall, Mord is still a great solo Q pickup right now, but not as egregious as many would have expected. It's not just top lane Skarner that has emerged as a powerful carry in 14.8 as jungle Skarner is absolutely taking over. We definitely underestimated how much players just running optimal builds would help out Skarner's solo Q win rate. In our previous tier list, we noted how Heartsteel was the best rush item for Skarner, but it was only being played in about 9% of games. Fast forward to 14.8, and it's now being picked up in 50% of games, which has significantly helped to bolster Skarner's analytical showing. It's actually kind of insane right now, but Skarner players that are rushing Heartsteel are winning 54% of the time so far this patch, as opposed to Sunfire rushers who are at 50%. So as long as you're building your jungle Skarner optimally right now, he's an incredibly strong option for solo queue. We also noted in our OP builds video for this patch that Aftershock had been highly undervalued on Skarner for the Keystone Rune last patch, and in 14.8, that has started to change. More players have now caught on to the strength of Aftershock as opposed to Phase Rush on Jungle Skarner, which has helped players see much better results. Even with the hotfix nerfs going through, they won't actually negatively affect Skarner Jungle as heavily as top lane. Reason being is that Skarner Jungle maxes Q out first all the time, so he's not going to be feeling the effects of the W nerf until much later in the game. For Skarner's tier list placement for mid patch, we're going to be giving him a bump up the tier list going from B into OP tier. Now, despite Riot trying to buff Gray with the 14.8 changes, his win rate actually dropped 2% this patch. They've gone ahead and addressed this right away by providing Graves with a hotfix change. The original change to where attack speed reduced reload time has been removed, and in exchange, Graves attack speed growth has been increased from 2.6 to 3%. Since Graves doesn't really incorporate very much attack speed into his build, this scaling attack speed buff should be much more beneficial for him. With that said, we don't see how this change will significantly boost Graves up the solo queue tier list, so he's going to remain in the B tier for now. So moving on to the jungle tier list, we've got a few adjustments 
for mid-patch. We noted in the pre-patch tier list that we may have to shift Briar down into S tier depending on how the nerfs landed and we'll be going forward with that change. Nerfs have hit a decent amount and even though Briar is weaker for this patch, that doesn't necessarily mean you should stop playing her as she's still a higher priority than a lot of junglers. So with Briar dropping out of OP, Skarner will be taking her spot as the only OP tier jungler for patch 14.8. Two champs that are on the verge of OP tier right now that could be moved up in the next few patches if Skarner gets nerfed are Belveth and Volibear. Belveth has been performing incredibly well in 14.8 and is one of the few junglers who has been finding success in every single ELO bracket. Champ is currently being banned in over 40% of games in high ELO, however her win rate is actually better in the lower ranks right now. One champion whose win rate shot up a lot more than many would have expected at the start of the patch was Akali. Akali was buffed so that she now has 30 more base health and generally these changes add anywhere between 0.5 to 1% win rate. Akali actually ended up seeing a boost well over 2% to her win rate though, which had us a bit confused at first. Well, it actually turns out there was a bug with Akali's W at the start of the patch to where it was providing way more energy than intended. Riot has gone ahead and issued a hotfix nerf to combat this, so we should see Akali's win rate drop back down a bit. First day of the patch, Akali's win rate was up around 51%, which for a pro skewed champ like Akali is super high, and before this hotfix change went through, she was definitely an S tier pick. Now with the hotfix change live though, we see her falling back down to earth and leveling as a good A tier mid laner for 14.8. So for the mid lane tier list, OP tier will not be changing at all for mid patch as we continue to rate Diana, Ari, and Aurelian Soul as the strongest solo Q mid. With the likes of Akali buffed for this patch and her priority rising, there's a really great counter pick you can look to pull out. Hybrid Galio is that pick, and we covered this setup in our OP builds video for 14.8. Hollow Radiance Rush is performing very well in Galio right now, and you then transition into Riftmaker second. With the Hollow Radiance Rush combined with the point and click taunt, you make it very difficult for Akali to get anything done in the 1v1, and then later in team fights as well. And it's not just Akali that you can look to use this build against, as Fizz, Diana, Katarina, and Silas can all be hard countered by Hollow Radiance Galio. If there was ever a time where Galio mid is a super strong counter pick, it's now, so having him in your back pocket to pull out in certain spots is really valuable. And if you want to climb ranks fast as mid lane, then take our new mid lane course at Skillcapped. It covers A through Z of everything you need to know to climb as a mid laner. Pair that with our new Season 14 course on countering OP mid laners, and then head on over to our Smurf commentaries. Select your channel to watch live commentaries from challenger players showing you how to carry out of the exact elo you're stuck in. You can check all this out with the link in the description below. We'll be making one change to the ADC tier list for 14.8 and it involves misfortune. At the start of the season, MF was one of the best ADCs due to lethality builds completely outclassing crit. As the patches have rolled out though, crit ADCs have slowly but surely become significantly stronger, either through direct buffs or through the crit item buffs. This has in turn led to misfortune's power dropping relative to many other ADCs and we're finally going to be adjusting her her tier list placement to reflect that. MF is always going to be an amazing ADC for gold and below, but anywhere above those ranks, there's definitely much better options to choose from right now. If this were a high elo tier list, MF would be even lower down, but since we do skew our tier list more towards what's best for the majority of ranks, Misfortune is going to be moving into the ADC A tier. Many of our pre-patch predictions for ADC have come to fruition, as Kai'Sa and Draven really didn't gain much strength from their buffs. Jin has definitely been the biggest winner from the role, while the Zeri nerf didn't actually hit that bad at all. This means means there's no movement to the OP tier, as Jinx, Neela, and Kog'Ma are on a level above everyone else right now. If you guys are looking to pick up Jin this patch, definitely prioritize the crit build. Ghostblade Rush has been quite popular on Jin for a while, but since Jin got the change this patch to where he gains more movement speed on crit, there's less incentive to build lethality now. Storm Razor with Infinity Edge and Rapid Fire Cannon are the three core items that you should be running on Jin for most games. Since Thresh was the only support who was adjusted for 14.8, there's no reason for us to make any drastic changes to the tier list. Riot has actually come out and stated that Janna will be nerfed in 14.9, so definitely take advantage of her while you can right now. Blitz is the best melee support that you can play for solo queue, while Janna is on top when it comes down to enchanters. Poppy support is a pretty interesting pick that has been performing very well in solo queue as of recent, and even being picked up by some pro players. You go Bloodsong, Swiftness, Boots, and Deadman's Plate, which gives the champ incredibly strong roam and skirmish strength. It's this very chaotic style of play with Poppy support that just tends to work really well for that solo queue environment. Poppy's W is just such an amazing tool to have as well in this day and age of League where dashes are so prevalent. Despite Poppy's lower solo queue play rate, we do think the champ is quite undervalued right now and she's going to be moved into the S tier. Alright guys, one last thing, our rank up guarantee is insane. It's like signing up for the gym and getting a refund if you don't get ripped. That's how confident we are in skill cap. We obsess over making the best guides with top players, rigorous testing, and top tier video editing to make your climb easy. If you're ready to level up, visit skillcap.com and see the difference. So that's going to wrap everything up for the 14.8 mid-patch tier list update. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you back soon.